in college when your family got their first car. University of Palm Love for like I know you all know it's branch normal and AM and N. All right, hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Branch Normal Collection. My name is KP, uh Cave and Pain. Some of you all know me as Chris. Um, welcome. I want to just give a little bit of information about uh what the Branch Normal Collection is why the title, give you some inside information uh, as you're checking out the videos that we have posted and the interviews that we have posted so far. Um, now in general, right now, as of May of, I'm sorry, as of June, almost July, 2021, the goal is to uh, have a collection of 50 interviews. And these are gonna be people from different uh, career paths, passion paths. So we have a, a lady landscaper, we have a poet, a clinical researcher so far. We're going to have an esthetician. Uh, we're going to have a, um, we have a lady who works in museums. Um, and she has some side projects as well. Uh, we have a guy who runs his own home repair company. We have somebody who was a former, is a former banker. Uh, so we're going to try to cover as many career paths as possible. Uh, I want to check out some government careers as well. But along with uh, careers and jobs, we also want to really get into people's passions um, because we really want to not just focus on money necessarily, but what makes people happy uh, overall throughout their entire life. And so we'll be uh, really digging into, into some passions as well. All right. Now, the title, um, Branch Normal. Um, let me go back. I'm from Palm Bluff, Arkansas, born and raised. I lived there till 2002 when I graduated from high school. Um, a lot of my uh, family members went to college there in Palm Bluff, the University of Arkansas of Palm Bluff. Uh, one of my cousins, a couple of cousins actually, my, my mom, my aunts, uh, my grandparents originally came uh, for school there as well. And the HBCU back home is the University of Arkansas of Palm Bluff, so UAPB. And I grew up going to homecoming. I grew up uh, doing summer sports there. I took piano classes there. Um, when I was in high school uh, and I was really involved with art, uh, spend time out there um, just checking out the art gallery and getting to participate some with the art students at the time. I have an aunt who taught at UAPB for years. Um, I recently found out my, uh, my, my father's wife uh, worked there for years. So I have a pretty strong connection to UAPB and I grew up on the north side of Palm Bluff as well. Uh, right off of Havis Street. Um, so uh, as a child, I would see UAPB's marching band actually practicing, walking, that, marching down our street as they practiced for parades and things like that. And that really created my love for music as well as a child. And that just connected me to the school. So I had a, plenty of connections to a UAPB, even though I myself did not, did not attend UAPB, which we'll get into uh, later. But... Um, UAPB had a really strong impact on my life, and as I was, as I was starting this collection, I knew I wanted what I wanted the collection to be, but I also want to kind of have a nod to home in the title. And so instead of calling it the Palm Bluff Collection, it's called the Branch Normal Collection. Originally, UAPB was titled AMNN, Arkansas AMNN. Um, that's a agricultural, agricultural, mechanical, and normal school. But before it was called Arkansas AMNN, it was titled the Branch Normal School, um, or Branch Normal, as you know, we called it back home. So, um, Branch Normal is just a, a nod to Palm Bluff. It's a nod to my my mother, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents who uh, who who were educated there, and any person who has been affected and impa impacted by uh, the university at all. All right, the Branch Normal Collection. Now, um, there were two things that really had me start this collection. 
and one was being a substitute teacher. I was a substitute teacher for two years at um, Auden Reed over in South Philly. And one thing I noticed, well, Auden Reed and a few other schools as well. Um, but one thing I noticed when I was a substitute teacher in different schools was that when I asked my students um, or when we talked about money, everybody they looked up to was a millionaire. And I was starting to get this idea that for them, you were either a millionaire or you were broke. And I feel like there are a lot of careers that are in between zero and being a millionaire. And so I really want to have a space where I get to talk to people about their different careers, their career paths. Did they go to school for or not or not? What type of training did they have for it? What prepared them for that uh, career or passion in their uh, younger years as a child even? And so... Um, I just think is our teenagers need to know that even if you're not famous, you can make money, right? You can get to a million dollars. You may not get it instantly, but you can have a job that makes $100,000, right? Uh, and if you're saving and you're budgeting correctly, you can get to a million pretty easily. Um, so I just think our, our black kids and specifically need to have a better understanding of uh, what career paths are open to them. Um, I realized as an adult that I that I wanted to be a sociologist. Um, I didn't know that at 18. I didn't even know that was an option at 18. I know who I knew who W. E. B. Du Bois was. I didn't know that his career was a sociologist. Um, but that's something I realized that I was interested in. But I didn't know there was a title for that. I didn't know there was a career for that. And uh, I've come across a few other careers that had I known about them at age 18. And had I really um, kind of known the ins and outs of how to go along that path, I think I would have gone along those paths. So instead of like me putting my energy into being sorry for myself or anything like that, I figured I'd just like pay whatever energy forward by uh, having these interviews that teenagers can watch. So I do encourage you to uh, show these to any teenagers that you know. Um, I, I don't think it's too early to ever have us... Um, learn about more career paths, more career paths and more options for us. But also, besides teenagers, if you're looking for a shift in your career and you want to get a better idea of how to go about that shift or uh, go down different career paths, I suggest checking these out as well. Uh, I'll try to speak in depth with people about their career paths and how they went down those paths and what they think it took and kind of their hardships as well. One thing with the internet and social media in 2021 is that we often only show the good side of uh, people's stories, but we don't show the, we don't show the struggles, we don't show the misstarts, we don't show the parts where you had to do it three times before it really worked. And so uh, I really want to go in depth with talking to people and really uh, give you a good idea of what it takes in real life. All right. So, um, how to listen. Now you can listen to this, you can sit down and watch 90 minutes if you have the time, but I know everybody's busy. So I say, um, turn on Spotify, turn on YouTube, play this in your car on the way to work, right? Play this on your road trip, right? Play these episodes, because you can, you can watch the episodes on YouTube, but you can also just listen to them on Spotify. So turn them on while you're, you're cleaning your home, turn them on while you're cooking, right? Um, Watch, watch the episodes while you're eating. Um, if you want to start off the morning with just 30 minutes of an episode, do that. Split it up however you want to. Um, you know, watch it like a regular TV show or any other podcast you would watch on YouTube. I don't call it a podcast. I call it a library collection because of the intentions behind it is to really document our stories. Um, but, but watch it as you would any show. Um, and even if you're watching an interview of somebody you know, watch it all the way through because I'm going to try to always get out some information that none of us know about this person, even if we've known this for years or known them for years. All right. So, um, yeah, listen to it in your car. Listen to you while you're exercising. Um, watch it, you know, if in the morning, watch it during dinner, watch it with friends, watch it with the teenagers in your family. Right. Watch it with people who have similar career paths. Right. Who may not? Who may also get some tidbits from this as well? All right. Um, and also, uh, the last thing I'll say, we're gonna pretty much keep this clean. Uh, there might be one 
you know, dirty word here or there. But for the most part, we're going to keep this clean so that you can share with teenagers and anybody of any age. All right. Um, so I mentioned being a substitute. Another part of my uh, motivation for this was when I was, um, by the time I got to my sophomore year in college, my father passed. I was 19 years old. My father passed and my mother was suffering, suffering from dementia. So I didn't really have a family member. I, well, let me go back. I didn't have a parent that I can really ask about their lives. Right. And so to me, at the age of 19, it became really important to document our stories. And um, and I started on that journey. I started doing family tree research when I was 19, 20 years old. I began to ask my family members a lot of questions. And the more I asked, the more I learned and the more I was just amazed by everything we've done. Um, in our family, but I also in black people in general, uh, we've done a lot. We talk about like slavery and Martin Luther King, but we've done so much since 1865 when slavery ended. Um, black people have contributed so much to this country, so much to their personal families, and uh, so much to their so much to their communities as well. Um, and we're still doing this. We do this every day. It's some. It's it's plenty of black people out there working right now. Why are you watching this? Why are you listening to this? Somebody's doing something positive. Somebody's doing something important. Somebody's changing their whole family's future right now. And uh, I think it's important to document these stories. And we don't have to document it when somebody's famous or when they turn 100 years old or when they pass away. We can document these stories right now. So that's the purpose of the Branch Normal Collection. Let's document these stories while people are doing the work, while they can remember all of their struggles, while they can remember their, remember their triumphs as well. We don't have to wait 50 years to be inspired by somebody. Uh, let's be inspired right now. And so... Um, just my personal story, knowing that any day anything can happen to where you don't have that person around to really ask those questions and really talk to in that way. I think it's important every day for us to document our own stories. And with that said, like I encourage you all to go document your own family stories. Put a put a camera on the oldest member of your family. Put a camera on the oldest sibling that you have. Right. They're going to know more information than you may have if you're not the oldest sibling yourself. Um Give your um, your mom, your dad, your aunts, your uncles, give them give them a set of maybe 25 questions you would want you want to ask them and just let have them write down their answers in their own time. Give that back to you. Right. Um, so it's never too late or too early to uh, start documenting our own stories. And I really encourage you all to do that in your families and also those teachers who, who played an important role in your life. Interview them, have lunch with them as well. One thing that my mother always talk, told me was like, she was like, we have to talk. As black people, we have to learn to communicate with each other, express our goals to each other, um, and, and just learn how to communicate better with each other. So one thing um, I definitely encourage anyone to do, if there's somebody who in, inspires you, has inspired you, take them out to lunch. If you can't take them out to lunch, call them up on Zoom. Just have a, have a conversation with them. Pick their brain. For information, tell them that you're inspired by them, uh, and it really learn their story. Um, one of the best things we can do is learn each other's stories and pass those stories along, right? Um, and that's how we keep each other alive for years and years and years. Even after we're gone, um, we can pass each other's stories along, and we can we have the ability at this point in 2021 20, to document easily. Um, and we're one of the first generations to really have this much these many resources. To one, document. We can we can type up stories. We can write stories down. We can pick up our phone and record anybody anytime their voice. And we can record their faces. We can record them talking um, as well, visually as well. And so um, that's one big goal of uh, the Branch Normal Collection is to document our stories um, now. You know, without you know having to worry about oh what we have to do in the past or oh did that person pass away. Um, I'll, I'll say this in closing. My friend Justin Graham passed away a few years ago, and he's one of the people I wish I put a camera on. He was a singer uh, based in Willingboro, New Jersey, an amazing singer. He's actually you can find his stuff on YouTube and Spotify. But uh, he was a singer who lived in Willingboro, New Jersey. He was often performing in Philadelphia, and I wish I thought about thought about it then to put a camera on him. Um, but you know, we don't have to. 
we don't keep we don't have to keep like having these regrets about not documenting people let's pull out our cameras and and do that work now and that's a part of the work that branch normal is uh hoping to do now um the last thing i want to mention is that um what are my qualifications so to even be doing this um so my favorite book my favorite book is the alchemist and um the alchemist talks about finding your personal legend what's that thing that you're supposed to do that nobody else can do the way you would do it all right and i personally i i think this is my personal legend to do the branch normal collection to have these interviews now um my my interests are one black people two history three genealogy right um and of course i love talking as well so for the last um almost 10 years of my life i've hosted poetry events in the philadelphia area um so i love talking and one thing that would happen is when i was introducing artists to the stage or when they were done performing I would like to ask them questions, but I never really got to sit down with artists the way I wanted to. I'm a very curious person, so I always have a lot of questions. I'm always curious about how someone got from step A to step B. And so uh, I, get to, I get to do that with this collection. Um, I'm an African-American studies major when I was in college, and so I get to use that information as well. You'll see in each episode, there's gonna be a spotlight on an African-American that many of us may not know about. Um, and so there'll be a five to 10 minute uh, history lesson at the beginning of every episode. And that person that I highlight will be in relation uh, career wise or passion path wise to the person being interviewed. So I get to use my African-American studies background. I get to use my hosting background. I get to use my research background with uh, just the family tree research I've been doing for the last uh, 15 years of my life. And um, just my general interest in history. I watch a lot of documentaries as well. Um, actually, <laughs> before taping this, we I was uh, just watching a documentary on black people who migrated to Arkansas and then black people who migrated from Arkansas. Um, in the late 1800s, a lot of black people migrated to Arkansas from Georgia, South Carolina, and the East Coast. Um, getting away from the plantations they were on during slavery. They migrated to Arkansas in the 1870s and 1880s, and then a lot of them left after the Civil War. But my family in particular was from there, was there since 1890. My family's been in Arkansas since uh, for about uh, 130 years or so now. And I uh, have this deep connection to Arkansas because of that. Um, still have family there. Um, Born and raised in Pine Bluff. And uh, like I said, that's why it's called the Branch Normal Collection. But my background in history and African-American studies, when I went to Mercer University in Macon, Georgia, I was an African-American studies major. When I went to Temple University in Philadelphia, I was uh, in the field of African-American studies as well. And my goal then was to be an African-American studies professor, but I left school to do poetry full time and I made an agreement with myself then that I would do poetry full time for 10 years, go hard at it, give it 100 percent. And after that, if I want to go back into the field of African-American studies or teaching in some way, then I would. Now, I would substitute teacher for two years after that 10 years. Um, I, I definitely went full force with poetry. I published chat books. I ran a company called Poetry 24-7. I hosted uh, several poetry events. And I've, I feel very fulfilled about that poetry, spoken word part of my life. I uh, performed as well. I put out CDs. I put out chapbooks. Um, but I feel very fulfilled about that time of my life. But the African-American studies and the history and the genealogy side and the documentation side is the part of me that's unfulfilled right now. So Branch Normal is kind of filling that gap for me. And, um, and I'm also following up on an agreement that I had with myself that I would come back to the work that I was doing when I was 21, 22 years old and do that again once I was, you know, 32, 33. I'm 30, 36 now. And so getting this work done, happy to be doing it. Um, but 
thank you for watching this. Uh, thank you all for checking out the Branch Normal Collection. Oh, the last thing, um, how to support. So I definitely pay for everything out of pocket, pay for the camera, pay for the uh, subscriptions we need to get everything posted here, uh, pay for the hard drives to keep all the files, uh, paying for jump drives to get all the interviewees, the files as well so they can have these uh, uh, these interviews in their possession and use them any way they want to as well um, as of June 2021 we're not doing ads on anything anything um, no ads on YouTube no ads on Spotify um, but if you would like to support uh, you can definitely cash app me you can cash app me you can Venmo me uh, my cash app is cave and pain 84 um, I'll put that here my cash app is a uh, cave and pain 84 and what is my Venmo give me one second my uh, my Venmo is cave and pain so so cave and pain for Venmo cave and pain 84 for cash app uh, if you want to support in any way you know it's going to a good cause um, and if you don't know it's going to a good cause, keep watching. I think you'll understand that it's going to a good cause. But if you want to support, you can support that way. It's all appreciated for sure. Um, and we can pretty much keep this black on um, without without doing any extra things. All right. Um, thanks again for listening. Uh, check out the episodes we have for the Branch Normal Collection. Peace.